sleep, great. But I was having a dream before I woke up. It was kind of a strange dream. And I've never met my grandfather before because he passed away when I was eight years old. And, and uh, the family had broken up when my mother was five years old, let's put it that way. And all the years later, we always looked for him and searched for him. And his name was Nes Nes can't even say it. Nesmento. Nes Nesim. I have to look at the word to see how it's pronounced because it's different. It was a Portuguese. All right. And there's a there's a uh, uh, Gary right out here has got a name spelled exactly like my grandfather's name was. But when he came to the United States, they changed the name to George Smith. So you can find out why we never found him because we were looking for George Smith. And it was interesting when my mother passed away, or just before she passed away, she had a half sister, and her half sister didn't have the same father. She says, "We're going to look for your family, and we're going to send out uh, these letters." And so <clears throat> they got a hold of somebody, and they they had over two thousand names of George Smith. It was about the time frame, age, and everything like that. But they said, "Well, we're going to send you these twelve names and these letters first to get you started while we get all this stuff off this database." And so anyway, so out of those 12 names, they were able to find my grandfather, that he was passed away, that his, her brothers and everything else. And so it was a healing process. So there's a whole other story. But I'm just trying to tell you, there was just a, such a separation. But we always had this certain vision that this is the way it looked, this is who he was, and you know what I mean? You're looking for somebody so long. You kind of imagine what it's going to be like or, or what they look like and everything. But anyway, I had this dream last night. It was a dream that I had. It was interesting. It was in Sacramento River. I recognize Sacramento River. We used to do a lot of fishing there when I was a kid and things like that. We didn't go swimming there. I didn't like the swimming down there because you don't end up there a lot. But anyway, uh, so there was this boat there, and I seen on the news that George Smith was over in that boat. See if it'll make sense to some of you. But George Smith was in that boat, and I could see that boat on TV, and I wanted to go down there and see George Smith. And so on my way to go connect, that's a big deal, to connect with him, some of my past, some of my heritage, I was going to go connect with him. All of a sudden, I realized, no, he, he died a long time ago. So then he had a son that was George Smith Jr., who I'm trying to connect again. So I'm thinking, no, he died in 68 too. He committed suicide, and he died in 1968 also, around the same time. But the only thing that I could get out of this whole thing was sometimes we want to go back and connect when, we, when the reality is it's not there no more. It doesn't take away our dreams and our, 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 thing, our memories and everything. But then a lot of times what we do is we, we step back and we uh, try and find another way. Sometimes we don't accept that reality. I'm talking to you in the spirit right now. Because you know who we are and who I'm talking to. Maybe more than one. But it comes to a time where we've got to kind of walk away. We don't forget. We don't move away. But we've got to walk away and realize where we're at in this time that we're living in. And who God's called to the enemy will always try and bring you back to a place. Bring you back to a situation bring you back to circumstances. He'll always, and I'm not talking to one now, I'm talking to many this morning, but the enemy was always calling you back. Well, didn't you look a little bit closer? Remember this, remember that. And it puts us in despair, it puts us in sadness. And when it says this time and the season we're living in right now, I'm talking about Christmas, seasons and stuff like that, and holidays are a difficult time. And we need to realize that those things were real, but they're not real, they shouldn't move our hearts is what I'm trying to say. It doesn't make you not human or not compassionate because you're not moved to those things, but you have to recognize what it does to you. That's what I'm trying to say. How it moves you. What it does to you. Does it trap you? Does it bind you? Does, you know what I'm saying? And we have to be careful about that. But it was just a strange dream, and I thought I would share it because it, it just, a lot of times when I remember dreams like that, there's some uh, significance to it. And so I just want to say that today is there's some things that God wants you to step away from. Not to forget, but to step away from because it keeps weighing you down. And then you'll come back and you'll try and find another way to get back to that place again. But yeah, we just have to trust God and say, you know what, God? 
I got to move on. God, I don't want to live life. I want to be satisfied in my life. Because it's not all just about serving God. Yes, it is a big part about serving God, but God wants you happy. God cares about you. He loves you. Because if you're not healthy, if you're not emotionally healthy, if, if you're struggling in those things continuously over and over and over and over again, it's not good for you or for the Father because he can't work through you because you're always weighted down. You're always... Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Then I have another dream. I'm not here just to talk to you, but I have another dream. It was interesting. It was here in this church. We were cleaning in here, but over here it was like that bed that's there. There was a big bed. We're there and we were cleaning. And I was trying, some were trying to clean up in one area and I was wanting to clean up in another area because I was thinking a little bit deeper than what the other people were thinking. Not everybody, but there were some. But in that dream, I began to open that up and then there were black widows that were in that vent. And there were things there that I tried to take them out little by little. And somebody got in a hurry and they went over and they got started pulling out of there and all of a sudden it became overwhelming. There were a lot of black widows and I couldn't control what was coming out of there. And what I'm trying to say is don't get in a hurry. There are things that God's pulling out of us. There are things that God is doing, but don't get in a hurry. Let's go through the process and allow God to do the work. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Don't make sense to me, but I hope it makes sense to you. It somewhat does, but I thought that it was interesting because we do. For me, it, it was very difficult for me to learn how to even calm down, period. Not in the dream, but just in life. I've always been a hard worker, did concrete and ran stuff, and it was difficult for me to go through the process of slow down, be patient. It don't have to be done right now. Just go through the process and work through the process. Because out there, I wanted it now, I wanted it fixed, I wanted it whatever. And so I've had to go through the process. So in this process of what God's doing right now, let's make sure that we don't get in a hurry. Let's don't be detrimental to one another. But let God move and work through us. And we can be uh, um, cautious about what we do and allow God to uh, perform what he wants to perform through us. All right? So anyway, moving on from there. Okay? I don't think that pastor is a freak, all right? I'm a freak on this show. Sure. That's on my heart this morning. All right. So in chapter 6, verse 1, and like I said, I'm not going to hold too long. I just want to read to you. I didn't mean to come out of the gun this morning, but uh, I really felt like God wanted to really do something special and remind you that, uh, you know, it's time not to back up. It's time to go forward. But it is here in chapter 6, verse 1. It said, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us, as we're baptized into Jesus Christ, we're baptized into his death. This confirms what Laverne was saying. We've been baptized in his death. He has accomplished all things. Christ is the first fruits. He's the forerunner of what we are as the body of Christ. We have to come to an understanding and to a place to understand that the Holy Spirit is that spirit that came. That was the promise to come that would, it would be uh, in us and that we would function by it. And so many uh, religions right now are pushing back the Holy Spirit and not giving him room, not allowing him to do what he needs to do. And it's, you need to be careful because that's the very organism who we are is because by the Spirit of God that lives in us. It's him that flows in us as a body. Not just this body here, but the body down the church, down the street. Those who have been born again, those who accept the Christ Jesus, declare Christ Jesus, they belong to the body. And it's the Holy Spirit. We need to give him his place. He's doing some awesome things right now. He's bringing the body together. He's causing this body to come together. It says he's coming back with a church without spot or without wrinkle. He's coming back without compromise or sin. And so when he's coming back like that, he's doing a work right now in the body. He's the forerunner. We know that John the Baptist was the forerunner of Jesus Christ coming. The Holy Spirit is the forerunner of what Jesus is coming. And he's doing the work here right now. It says when he comes, he's not going to speak of himself. 
because he's only going to speak what he hears from the Father and the Son. So he doesn't represent himself, but he represents the Father and the Son. So when you hear something come out in this atmosphere and it manifests now, it's the Holy Spirit that's that avenue that's speaking from the throne of God, whether it's God or whether it's Christ speaking in that. It's all God. We believe in the Godhead, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We believe that. They're all three in one. Can you wrap your mind around it? Somewhat, but not really. I can't after all these years. I understand they're, they're one God with three persons. Three personalities. And if you look, you'll see their dispensation. You'll see what's going on. But I'm not talking on that this morning. But I need you to recognize this morning that the Holy Spirit, that he's doing a work right now in the body of Christ. You're going to see a movement, a greater movement. It's not the yell. It's not the noise. It's not, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about, there's going to be healing. There's going to be miracles. There's going to be all these things in this last day. He says, I'm going to pour my spirit upon on all flesh. That didn't all happen at Pentecost. He didn't pour it out upon all flesh. He poured it out on those that were in the upper room. It was available to everybody else, but yet he didn't pour it out. There's an outpouring that's getting ready to take place. We're seeing a lot of movement that's going on throughout the nations. We look at China and some of those ones that are uprising. They may not be seeking God, but they're not happy with where they're at. They're discontent in the way life has treated them and where they've come to. And they're looking for something different. They're looking for peace. They're looking for something different. And the church has something different for them because the Spirit of God is within them. It's when we allow the Spirit of God to move in us, then it can move through us. And that's what we want to do. We want to move through us. We can lay hands on that one that, that's at the store. Oh, that's kind of weird. I don't think it was. When Jesus came up, they didn't think it was weird. They were chasing him down the street. Right. They were pushing in the crowd. It didn't matter. Zacchaeus climbed a tree. He wanted to see Jesus. He was a tax collector. Could you see our IRS up there in the tree? I'd like to see a few of them in the tree, but not hanging, of course, but in the tree looking for Jesus. But if there's a lot of things that we put on reasoning and we push it back and say, oh, that's just silly. The Bible says he uses the foolish things to confound the wise. And so there's going to be foolish looking things, but it doesn't matter because it's not all about me. It's about him. It's about what he wants to do, what he wants to uh, accomplish. So I'm not telling you to become a freak. I'm just telling you that, you know what? God may use you in a different way than you've ever been used before. Yeah. And you have to be pliable for that. We're living in that time when the church needs to start giving out. When the church starts giving out, that's when the starts, church starts going up. But as long as we pull back, as long as we hold back, as long as we're in reservation with, of what we believe, then guess what? It's not going to happen for anybody else. Because if you don't know and you're in question, well, how am I going to convince somebody else? I know if you have a product for sale and you're trying to sell something, you've got to believe in that product. If you don't believe in that product, you know you're going to have no buyers. And that's the way it is with Christ. You believe what you believe. I'm not asking you, you to believe what, what, I, what I'm saying that Anne believes. I'm saying believe what I believe, and she will say what she believes. Nobody knows what they believe except for themselves. We are our own witness. We have our own witness. I come from a different place than she comes from, but she has a different testimony, a different witness, and she should be declaring that. So when you hold back with your witness or your testimony, it doesn't go out there. You can't sell to nobody. Because you're trying to sell me. Oh, the pastor down there, he can preach. Or the pastor down there, he can do this. Or he can do that. I know the Spirit of God moves. Well, they don't care about that. What's it doing in your life? What's going on in your life? What's happening in your life? What's changing in your life? Because you're the only one who can speak to that. You're the only one that can speak to that. God wants to move us. And I believe in this next year. It's not New Year's yet. But I believe in this next year we're going to be moving out in a more powerful way. And I'm not talking about the stuff that goes on in here. Things are going to happen. The Bible says, signs follow them that believe. That means if you believe and you truly believe and you begin to declare, you know what's going to happen? Signs are going to follow them that believe. That's when the supernatural happens. I'm not looking for the supernatural. I'm looking for the belief sector to step up and say, you know what? I trust you, God. I believe you, God. And when we begin to do that, things are going to automatically happen. Everywhere Jesus went, it drew a crowd. Some places he couldn't even do miracles. So a lot of times you worry so, so much and you say, you know what? I, I prayed for that one. They just didn't get healed. Well, there was a time in Scripture that talks about Jesus couldn't do it. So he wrought very few miracles because of unbelief. There's other things about it. So I'm not looking for a back door. We should stand bold. But when the Holy Spirit tells you, pray for that individual, you pray for that individual. 
I remember over in here in Lodi a few years back, quite a, quite a few years back, and I was praying for this little girl. She was kidnapped, and she just disappeared. And she was gone for the longest. She was on the news. Some of you might remember. It was late 80s, 90s. And uh, I would begin to pray for her, and, and I was just praying. And I was just a working kind of guy. I mean, it wasn't uh, where I'm at today, you know, serving God at this level. Let's put it that way. I was just kind of scratching my way for everything I had and working and trying to find God in, in any kind of way to understand him. But anyway, I, made, I set my mind to pray for that little girl. And I began to pray for that little girl. And Safeway was still open. That's how long ago on uh, Lodi Avenue, Safeway was open back then. Wow. They're gone. Yeah, they're long gone. Smart uh, finals there now. But anyway, so I remember going in that store and I'm thinking, whatever happened to that little girl? It just hit me like that. And my heart was just almost dropping because I was exhausted from hoping, mistrusting, Right over on the newspaper stand, when they still had the newspaper stand, the little girl had just got rescued. It was powerful because it was weeks. And what had happened is another little girl got kidnapped. They took her down here to uh, Elk Grove somewhere to try to hide her in a church. The guy was like a pedophile, but she got away. When she got away, the other little girl got away. But it was just powerful that I'm just talking about prayer. We pray. It might have been a strange thing. Oh, that's not going to do anything. You're not going to make no difference. Nothing's going to happen. But yet God, that's the whole thing, but God. When God steps into it, and you dare to believe. See, we are the voice of God. We are the heartbeat of God. The body is. Where the heart at? It's in the body. Huh? So when the Lord drops something on our heart, if we respond to it, then we're the ones that actually are supposed to declare and supposed to work and walk out what he's saying. And so if we understand it's the Holy Spirit that's moving, I hear so many times, so many people saying, you know what, I was listening to that preacher or on the radio today, and they have the same message. Huh. Yeah. Same spirit. Yeah. Same spirit. Would you imagine your brain telling your, your body to move all kinds of different ways? It doesn't work that way. God's moving one particular way. We may hear differently, but he's sending the same message. He's doing the same thing. Let me get back in here. Uh, verse 4. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So he tells us to walk in newness of life. He's overcome death. Those things, uh, the, the death came by sin is what Romans says. And so sin came, and then death came, and Christ crucified death. He overcame death. So it's not for us to walk in death. What is things of death? Those are things of the dead man. Things of the past. Things of what we see around here that has no life in them whatsoever. The dead things. Christ crucified those things at Calvary. He arose victorious over all of those things. And it says that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead will also quicken your mortal body. What does that mean? It makes this physical body alive. This is mortal. It's not the body is changed in the twinkling of an eye when we see him face to face. It's this body right now. He wants to quicken us in our spirit, make us alive in our spirit, that we can declare the good news of Christ. That we can live out this life. That we can move away from the things that we've struggled with. The battles that we have. The enemy has tried to trap us so many times. And I sound like a broken record to myself as well. So many times over and over and over again by the same way. The same nature of the beast. The same attack. The same circumstances. It has a different face. But it's the same thing that we're, in which way I move. If you're moved in fear, guess what? It's going to be another act of something that's going to try and move you into fear. If you're a person that, that has to, uh, of intellect, in, in the sense of you've got to figure everything out, then you're going to be moved in the same way, and the enemy's always going to bring something before you to where you're going to move right into there thinking about, well, no, I'm going to reason this one out. But our makeup is a certain way, and we have to reject that makeup because Jesus died and put all of those things under. And so if we live, we can't live unto the flesh, but we have to live unto the spirit. Because the spirit is what makes it alive. He 
cause you to move beyond the circumstances and the situation. Don't let the enemy lie to you and tell you that you're the same as you were. You're not the same. If you're a new creation in Christ Jesus, old things are passed away and all things become new. There's newness in you. There's a new life that lives in you. It's not your life. A lot of times we're trying to figure it out and walk it out in our own, in our own understanding, our own ways. And that's not at all. It's, we rely upon what Christ has done for us. And it's through his power. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You know what that means? That doesn't mean that I'm going to be strong because he lives in me. That means he lives in me and he takes control over everything. And I have to allow him to take control of that because I still got this will problem. And if I'm unwilling to surrender to the Lord and allow the Lord to strengthen me, to lift me up, to take me from my past, then things are going to change when I allow him to do that. But he's God. He makes you do that. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. God doesn't make you do anything. If he did, our whole world would be saved and everybody would be all happy. Yeah. This place would be packed. Yeah. Think about it. We have this will. We're struggling with this will now. A lot of us in this world this morning is struggling with this will. I struggle with my will. It's something we have and we're connected to this world in such a way it's so difficult sometimes to, to reason things out. But we have to understand that, like I taught on Wednesday, the spirit, the reality is the spirit. That's the reality. When all this is gone, some of you have experienced that. Some of you may have had your house burned down or lost loved ones or things was lost. It's gone. But the thing about the spirit, it's eternal. It's when we die, we go, like I said, to heaven or hell. One or the other. But it's eternal. But what we see in this world now I mean, I'm 62. I can say that now. I'm 62 years old. <laughs> Thank you for the birthday wishes, too. But in 62 years, I've seen a lot of things pass and go. And it seems like the older I'm getting, I'm seeing a lot more go quickly. Yeah. I've seen, I can tell you story on story on story about my life. You know, when you would think this, this dude's got to just, this guy's nuts. I used to change life like I changed clothes back in the day. And so I can tell you things that would be, who's that guy? Who's that guy? Who's that guy? But all of that has changed. Things have changed. Situations change jobs, change cars, change school, change town, change this, change that. A lot of changes have gone on in my life. Changes are going to come. They're going to end. But I don't remember. In fact, the reason I mentioned my age, 62, is because I don't remember as clear as I did. Sometimes I could tell a story, and now I'm wondering, Oh, I guess that really true. <laughs> I've been saying it for so long, I forget the facts, you know. Used to, you lived it out, you know, and I don't live there no more to know all the facts, but yet at the same time, it's like things have changed, is my point. Things have changed in the last year here for me. God has done some major things in my life. He's doing major things in my life right now. And it's amazing what he's doing. I'm just amazed. I don't even, it's, it's strange to tell you. It's just amazing what God's doing. It's easy to serve God. It's easy to serve God, but it was so difficult. Just a year and a half, two years ago, it was difficult. I struggled. I had battles. But it just says, and I do have battles. I had a lot this morning. I had them over the house. I had them when I got here. We had them with our sound system. We had, it was just, the enemy who tried to move me and tried to get me all wound up to where I couldn't speak to you this morning. But he didn't have it. He wasn't successful because the Holy Spirit moved in a powerful way. And I've got word. Anytime I go and open this book and talk about Jesus, I've got word. I'm always prepared. But the enemy's not going to shake me. He's not going to move me. No matter what. You say, that's pretty daring. No, that's real. That's reality. Okay, let me read a couple more verses in here. And then I'll let you go. You say, what does this have to do? You're reading there. You're talking about things. And you <laughs> I'm trying to get to the point of what I'm talking about. Right, verse 5. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. So if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. And this is where we forget, we don't understand. We're living in a resurrected life with Christ. This isn't later, this is now. If you've been planted with Christ, if we've identified with Christ, when he died, he took all the sin. And he nailed them to the cross. You and I have done the same thing through Christ Jesus. We don't have to come and be nailed to the cross. We don't have to pay for our sins. Jesus paid for them all. 
But there it goes on, he said, but we live this resurrected life, this life that we now live, this resurrected life. This is the life that we want to that we want to draw from, where we want to come from, where we want to live here is the resurrected life. This is I'm victorious, that I know that tomorrow's going to be all right. I know that here are the struggles and the battles that are going on in the world today, but you know what? I'm going to be compassionate and I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to be the change that I can be, but I'm not going to let them weigh me down and hold me down and bind me up and cripple me to where I can't be victorious or I can't be the witness for who he is or what he's done for me. I owe him so much. Amen. Verse 6 knowing this that our old man is crucified with him. We just said that and that the body of sin might be destroyed and henceforth we should not serve sin. We should not serve sin. You can't serve two masters. I'm not talking about the little struggles like <gasps> you said a bad word. I'm not talking about that. So many of us, we walk around in condemnation. Oh, I said a bad word. I'm going to die by hell. That's a pretty weak salvation if that's it. Yeah, you need to ask forgiveness and you need to move on. You need some changes in your life that need to take place. But I hope to God that you, if you've lived this perfect life, the best life that you could, not perfect life, we don't live perfect life, but the best life that you could, and you were surrendered to God and said, and then the last words, you oh, Unspeakable is it all? <laughs> Some people believe it, and people. Str I struggled with it for years, even since I've been here in this place. It was self condemnation. I walked around like, <gasps> you can't live this life. It's too difficult. I did this or I did that. I got angry today. Oh my God, it's just over. I'm going to die and go to hell. And then I would climb back up. Because Jesus took my sins away and I would buy into that. And I, I believe it. But I would buy into it. Every time I said I buy into it because I just did just enough to move from where I was at, but it was still a reminder. Remember last week. Especially when you get up here to sing or you get up here to preach or something like that or witness to somebody, who's out the other way? Remember what you said? Yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you start going back and going back. They don't give you room like that no more. Because the Bible says if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And so I go to him right away. And I mean it when I go to him. He's not just a scapegoat that I run to. Lord, forgive me. I blew it. I messed up. And guess what? I'm back where I was. I'm ready to face the day. I'm ready to face the enemy. I'm ready to declare the words of God. Because greater is he. It's not greater is me. Greater is he that's in me than he's in the world. I just put him back on the throne. And I step back. And I allow him to do a work in my life. So anyway, so here. For he that is dead is freed from sin. So it has no bondage on you, no bearing. Christ has set us free. So now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. I'm just going to stop there if that's okay. But if you can read this whole chapter, I've read this chapter over and over and over for the last few days. And I read it this morning over and over and over again. But I want you to understand this morning, it is Christ. Don't allow yourself to pull back or draw back on some of these little things that we're talking about. But allow God to be that one that went before you and trust him and you walk it out and live it out. That's when you're going to walk it out. I remember last story. I remember one time when I was doing concrete and I just, I've been in concrete for probably about a year or so. Uh, some of you know me, I was a mechanic for 15 years before that, so it wasn't a trade that I was in. But when I got here, it was the only job that I could get at that time and I just took the first job. And so I started doing concrete, and there used to be a guy that used to, every time he walked up, he didn't say nothing to me. He just intimidated me. It was just like, if I was going to mess up, it was going to be in front of that guy. Yeah. And he happened to be the boss. And I knew, and I just, this thing, it got a hold of me. It seemed like I didn't even have to consciously think about it. It was just something would happen, and all of a sudden I'm pulling back. Because now I just messed up, I blew it, I'm an idiot, I'm this, I'm that. And then one day I just realized, you know what? I'm just going to do what I do, and I'm going to learn what's right, and I'm just going to move forward. Nothing changed for me. The guy still showed up. I still blew it at different times. But you know what? Not only did I become one of his top finishers, but I became a foreman for his foreman when he went on his own, and I was his foreman for a long time. And I started the business when I was 27 years old. And by the time I was 30, I was a foreman. and didn't know anything about concrete, but I had to get past a fear 
that the enemy would just bring to me every time he would a guy would walk up, and he wasn't intentionally doing it, but it just happened that way. The guy had the greatest respect for me all these years later, and we have conversations about God. And I appreciate David. His name is David Souza, and I appreciate David. But yet, every time he walked, he was like, <gasps> and that's what we do a lot of times. We want to serve God, and we'll go, and we'll do something, and it's just like, oh, I haven't been praying like I thought I should. I haven't been. They're trying to work it out. The Bible says we don't come by works. There's nothing that you can do. The only thing that we can do is trust God and rely upon God. That's it. I'm trying to get you this morning to move away from where we've been. We can't be that kind of a church, and we're not that kind of a church. We've already passed the bridge or pat, crossed over, whatever you want to call it. We've already moved, but I want to keep you moving this morning and say, you know what? I'm just declaring the word of the Lord and I am who I am by the grace of God and I'm going to trust him and declare his word and I'm going to watch this place grow and I'm going to watch God use me and develop me while I'm in this place and I'm going to be looking for his soon return is coming. He says those that are only looking for his return. If you got your head down, you ain't looking up. Praise God. Let's stand this morning.